does the nullifying of Sean Abrams' position mean for the National Prosecuting Authority? How is the ruling likely to impact President Jacob Zuma's pending criminal charges? Why has the High Court ordered Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa to appoint the new NPA head? What can be made of the ANC's women's and youth league's criticisms of the High Court judges? What time is it? It's question time. Welcome to the show. My name is Paul Tedu. The ruling made by the High Court in Pretoria on Friday continues to dominate headlines. In a landmark judgment, a full bench of the High Court nullified the appointment of NPA head Sean Abrams. Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa was ordered by the court to appoint a new national director within 60 days. The matter was brought to the High Court by Corruption Watch, Freedom Under Law, and the Council for the Advancement of the South African Constitution. The court also ruled that former prosecution's boss, Mkoli Singh was removed from his position unlawfully. That is, Ngasana has been ordered to pay back a 17 million rand golden handshake. But which of the three arms of state is the most effective now? Well, we are live, therefore you can call us and air your views. The number to dial 0891104210. Our international number plus 27891104210. Our Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest today, Professor Shadra Guto, he's a constitutional law expert. And joining us from our C Point studios, Judge Johan Krichler, Chairman of Freedom Under Law. Gentlemen, let me welcome both of you here. Welcome to the show. Let me just Thank start you, with Paul. you. And good afternoon to you. Yeah, let me just start with you, uh, Judge. Why did uh, your uh, institution take this matter to court? <laughs> there are a whole number of reasons. The very first reason is that the dismissal of Mr. Kasana was a put-up job. It was manufactured by the president because he didn't want an honest man in that position. There was no way that the president could get rid of the man that he had appointed by mistake, obviously, because he thought he had a pliable man in Mr. Kasana. It soon showed that he was dealing with an honest man who took his oath of office seriously and the president couldn't possibly have that in his national director of public prosecutions when he has a number of charges outstanding against himself. That's the main reason we went to court. Now, um, well, I, I would assume that you understand the law much, much better than a whole lot of us. What does it mean then, um, the fact that um, there's this uh, application to appeal? Does Sean have to vacate office? Doesn't he have to? Should the deputy president be appointing uh, his successor? Or, and what happens to, to, to Mkolis himself? Does he get reappointed? What is the story? Let's take your questions one by one and pour for the viewers. Let's understand clearly what the court ordered. The court said that the president's deal that he did with Kasana is invalid and that contract is set aside. Mr. Kasana has got to pay back the money. The court also said that Mr. Kasana cannot be appointed by the court in that position if the reappointment is considered and he's the best qualified, he may apply for reappointment. As far as the appointment of a new director of public national director is concerned, the court held that the president, because he has pending charges against him, is disqualified. He has a conflict of interest there 
and therefore the president should in this particular instance be regarded as disqualified from making the appointment in terms of the constitution where the president is unable to do something, the deputy president takes over. That's the basis upon which it was said that the deputy president must make the appointment. The uh, court did not say it must be Mr. Ramaphosa, and people who get very angry about it on the basis that there was a, an attempt to uh, advantage him in the leadership election for the ANC simply don't understand the law. We applied months, months, um, I think nearly a year ago for this particular provision in the order, namely that because Mr. Zuma is personally involved with the national prosecution, he should not pick the incumbent of that position. And we pointed out the very deal that he did, the illegal deal that he did within Kasana shows that he's unfit to exercise that power. That's why that was ordered. Now, whether Mr. Abrams and uh, the National Prosecuting Authority are going to proceed with their appeal is for them to decide. The law says that once they have lodged a notice of an application for leave to appeal, the order is automatically suspended unless we can persuade the court to make the order operational immediately. Okay. Whether we will do that and in what circumstances remains to be seen. Prof, um, I want to bring in today's developments. Um, does it have any bearing? Does it vindicate the pronouncement made last week that the president is conflicted? Is the president conflicted? Um, I think to ordinary citizens, not just to legal analysts and judges and so, you know, activists and so on, the president is conflicted. How can you be able to appoint a person or an institution to investigate and decide on whether you should be prosecuted or not. And the office of the National Prosecuting Authority is a very important one. It has to decide on the 783 yeah. charges brought against the president, which ones should go ahead and the president should go to court and be able to defend himself. We are not saying those charges means the president is uh, already convicted yeah. or found guilty, but he should go there and the evidence had to be provided. Should the person deciding on that and going ahead be appointed by the president? I don't think so. Okay. Because then it is, you decide on who is going to decide on whether you, or not you should go to court. But going to court is important because we need a system in the judiciary or in the country where there's a rule of law the courts make decisions okay. and if you think you are independent and you are innocent go to court put the evidence or be subjected to the evidence against you and the court will decide so i think that uh, the court high court in pretoria made the right decisions to say Yes, they should go ahead, but it cannot be the person who is going to be prosecuted who should be able to decide okay. who is doing it. And I think the High Court is right, and I believe that the President should go to court and clear himself or be 
uh, convicted not maybe not on all the 783 uh, charges against him but in some of them okay john you and herman scroll welcome hello you, sir. welcome sir um, yeah i just want to ask one question man yes uh, one I, I'm asking from Judge Krikla. Okay, go ahead. Uh, are they not afraid that even the judges that appointed that were appointed by President Zuma uh, may favor him? And secondly, I just want to ask, uh, or oh, may I put it like this? I just want to understand what wrong did. Uh, the, 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 the current uh, uh, director of prosecution done to be removed. Okay. I think. Thanks very much. Judge, those are your questions. Uh, let me make perfectly clear that no judges are appointed by the president alone. Technically, yes, a judge is appointed finally by the president. But in our constitution, there is a very careful process whereby anybody can nominate a duly qualified person whose name will go forward to the Judicial Service Commission, which is a multidisciplinary body, a body on which are lawyers, judges, um, private citizens, politicians, academics, and applicants for appointment to the High Court go before that body. If they make the recommendations, those recommendations go to the president. So technically, the appointment may be said to be made by the president, but it's not the president actually who makes the decisions. The decisions are made at the Judicial Service Commission. So you need not worry about presidential influence on the judges because of their appointment. And judges stay in office until their retirement age. You cannot fire a judge just because you feel like it. They have security of tenure. You can only remove a judge from office if that judge is shown to have misbehaved in a very serious way and parliament has agreed that he should be fired. So the judiciary you can rely on as being independent in terms of their appointment and in terms of their action, actual staying in power. Okay. The decision of a judge is also made in public for reasons that have got to be given so that you can look at the reasons you can say yes this makes sense or no this doesn't make sense if you think the judge is wrong you can take the judge on appeal that's how the system works and it works satisfactorily under the constitution okay let's take joe joe you are in uh, alberton welcome how are you hello joe hello how are you I'm well that day. Let them go. Who do? I, I, I've got a serious problem here. Hey. Judge Green, this judge here is a judge of the old apartheid. Okay. And they are all imagine now, now to control this country. The old judge that is actually himself telling us not the truth. The Lord doesn't say this guy has never been brought to court. You have never been brought to court. All what these judges are doing here, they want to run, run the country, uh, including Professor Guto there. There is no court that pronounced that Zuma, Zuma was, was convicted. There's nothing. It's just a speculation. This thing should have been done a long time ago. Why now? Why now? Mpo, I think what we're going to have, we're going to have a revolution. What, what do you suspect, Joe? Sorry? What do you suspect are the reasons why this is being done now? Sorry? I'm saying, what do you suspect are the reasons this is being done now? No, it's a white monopoly. All the churches that are from apartheid, they're all conflicted. Well, but Everybody it is not white. No, uh, let us separate the issues here. We are not dealing with the question of appointment of judges. That process is there. The constitution is quite clear. Mm. And people who are judges at the moment 
have been appointed within very transparent and yeah. clear process. Yeah, but, but so we are not actually talking about the credibility of the judges. We are talking about does the president appoint a commission of inquiry or whatever it is and who does he appoint there? So it's very important to separate the two. I think the judges have gone through a, a clear process of mm -hmm. appointment, but in this case, it's a question of is the president actually has the power or credibility of appointing somebody to deal with his own case. So and this is a case dealing with the president. Okay. And I think that's where we are. And uh, we should separate the two, not to okay. confuse. Let me bring in the judge. Yeah. Judge, one of the questions that John, uh, uh, John had asked was, what has Sean Abrams done uh, for him to be uh, fired? The point was made in court that if Mr. Kasana's dismissal was illegal, therefore he never vacated the office, therefore Mr. Abrams was not lawfully appointed. The court accepted that argument okay. and it said Mr. Abrams cannot fill the post, but this, because Mr. Kasana had done this dishonest deal with the president, he should not be appointed now either. either. Okay. So Mr. Abrams stays for 60 days and is, can then be replaced. Okay. Kaiser, you are in Kempton Park. Welcome. <laughs> Kaiser. Okay, Kaiser is no longer on the line, but oh. do give us a call. 89 0891104210. 89 uh, Prof, what is going to happen after 60 days? Or what, what do we expect to happen in the 60 days? Given the, 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 the other realities that there's Nazareth happening over the weekend. Well, first of all, I would like to say that uh, what we are dealing with here is that uh, the rule of law requires that the law be implemented and justice be done and the justice that is being done should be seen to be done not only f formal process and yeah. so on which is compromised that's one so the president is really not competent to be able to decide who is going to deal with this matter. So the court was right. Secondly, before you go to the second point, Prof, let me take Leroy. Leroy is in Bisho. Welcome quickly, uh, Leroy. Yes, Mpo. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Thanks for the call. Say hello to the judge there. Well, wow, he's and listening. Prof. As well. They are both listening. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mpo, yes. I think it's hard time that the black South Africans they refrain from using all racist rhetoric. Mr. Krishna and, and this gentleman there, they are doing a good service for all the South Africans. For Joe to come and comment the man I did, I did there, he's not representing the, representing the entire black nation for that matter. Mr. Johan Krishna, I put it to you, keep on good, doing the good job. Leave the black races like Johan. We cannot allow a situation that the nation, South Africa, will be hold to ransom by black races like Mr. John there. Okay. Please, let the gentlemen do their, at their utmost best, do the job with the black nation. We support them 100%, <laughs> right. including Mr. 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 The, the gentleman there, Professor. Prof. Good. Okay. Yes, please. Good. We, we, upload, upload. we upload the, the high standard they have set, Mr. Krishna, in this regard. Okay. And the professor there. All right. Thanks a, uh, a lot, uh, Leroy. The prof, I cut no, you. No, I, I would like to say that at the moment, the uh, commentator right now 
is really bringing an issue, which is a reality, that people who are pushing for constitutionality, rule of law, and so on, most of them tend to be uh, white institutions or institutions with mostly white people. We need to deal with that. Okay. Why are we, as African constitutionalists and legal persons, not coming forward? Why are to you? Do? Why are we not doing it? But and why are you not doing it? Oh, are you scared okay. of Kebima pathway? I'm not scared. I will do it, and <laughs> you are going to see this coming up very soon, that we are going to be very active so that it is not seen to be a white-dominated uh, promotion of constitutionalism. It is African-promoted constitutionalism. Okay. So that I agree with. But on the other side, on the issue we were discussing about uh, the case now in the court, yes. which we are dealing with, I think that President Jacob Zuma should go to court and clear himself. Okay. Hold it there. Judge, the Women's League and the Youth League are saying there's a judicial overreach. Your reaction to that? They're entitled to their opinion. I th disagree with them fundamentally. They say that is because the court has ordered the deputy president to appoint the next NDPP. That part of the order had nothing to do with who the current occupier of the position of deputy president is. That part of the order was planned by us as the applicants successfully it turned out but we planned that a year ago when it had nothing to do with who would be the candidates in the race for election as the leader of the ANC. They misunderstand the order they misunderstand the reasons behind it. I can understand their misunderstanding, but they must not on the basis of that misunderstanding challenge the integrity, the honesty, the competence and the independence and the impartiality of three honorable men who decided a difficult case to the best of their ability. If you were an advisor to um the president, um, Prof. Good. What would you tell him? I would tell the president if I was an uh, honest advisor. The problem is that the president has so many advisors who are pressing us rather than advisors. You tell the person the truth and you say, you make the choice. And I would tell him, please, you are wrong. And in this case, step aside, apologize to the nation, let the vice president at the moment, or the deputy president, take over, and you go and rest. But if he goes on trying to be the president, he's really damaging this country, and the path we need to follow to build a constitutional democracy based on the rule of law, constitutionalism. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, both gentlemen, for making time to talk to us. That was Question Time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. From me and the entire crew, I will call